Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted to have you with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time joining us. We extend a warm welcome to you and trust that you're greatly blessed with what you hear today. We want to begin with prayer. There is so much to pray uh, about and people to pray for. We want to remember our nation, the direction of this nation and all those that are in leadership. We also want to pray for our local community and region, Cornerstone Pentecostal Church, and we want to remember our brothers and sisters around the world. Perhaps you have a special and spoken request. It's a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you. We praise you. We worship you. Father, we thank you for the abundance of all things. Father, we pray for the direction of our nation. We pray that the Spirit of God, Word of God, and Church of the Living God can influence the direction of this nation and influence those that are in leadership. Father, we also pray for our local region and community that you will continue uh, to provide us with divine intersections with the hungry and thirsty. I pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you'll open up the windows of heaven and pour out, God, your power, your presence, and your blessing upon your people. Lastly, Father, we remember our brothers and sisters around the globe, wherever they may be. Father, we pray that you build a hedge of protection around them. We ask all this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said amen. I want to draw your attention to a familiar passage in Scripture, and I want to talk about one specific aspect about this passage of scripture. We want to start in the book of Luke, chapter number 15 and verse number 11. And he said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. Everybody say a far country. And there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the hus that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger. I will arise and go to my father, and will say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and am no more worthy to be called uh, thy son, make me as one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. Very famous passage of scripture about the prodigal son. I want to specifically talk about one aspect of this called memories of a far country. Memories of a far country. As I've already mentioned, this is a, a very famous passage of scripture. Contextually, it's found in this particular chapter where there are three different examples of lostness. And it's given by no less than the Lord Jesus Christ himself. Of course, you have the lost sheep, you have the lost coin, and then you have the story of the prodigal son. Seemingly out of nowhere, this younger of the two sons says, give me that which falls to me. And not many days after that, he takes a journey into a far country. The Bible is very specific where it says that he wasted his living with riotous living. Harlots, uh, partying, uh, fornication, our minds, our minds are allowed to go to certain places here right now, not specifically, but just to understand that riotous living encompasses a profligate, a carefree, absolute 
No rules, no regulations, no perimeters, no boundaries. Just give it all away. Just get involved with everything. And he finds himself in a pig pen. He realizes that he has nothing left. He realizes that I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to work to eat. And he goes to a man and says, whatever you have for me to do, I've got to have employment. I've got to be able to feed myself. And he finds himself in a pig pen. He's feeding the pigs. And it's while he's feeding the pigs that he remembers some attributes of the environment that he had before. And it's there that he realizes even the servants in my father's house had much to eat and much to spare. And so he devises a plan to go back and repent. And so the father sees him on the road. No doubt the father understood that a famine was in the land. That famine, I believe theologically, that famine was designed to bring that son to himself. And so the father sees him wandering up this road and he's, he's, he's haggard and he's, and he's unkept and the father runs to greet him. And while his son is repenting and his son is talking, the father is saying, bring the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand uh, a ring of authority was a signet and put shoes on its feet and bring forth a fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be married for that which is was dead is alive and that which was lost is found. Incredible illustration of the mercy and the grace and the loving kindness of the father. The willingness to restore that relationship and that son back to safety and back into uh, the arms of the father. Incredible story. And so the son that took this journey is now home. And now he's not a servant. He'll never be a servant. He, he uh, for whatever reason, he, he took the low road and said, just make me as a servant. But you can't change uh, the dynamics of spiritual genetics. Once you are a son, once you are a child of God, you are forever uh, those genetics are always there. Um, and so he could not take the role of a servant. He had to take the role of a son. And there's responsibilities with being a son. And there are rules and regulations and benefits and understandings. And as I've already mentioned, great responsibility. And that is what he had uh, to perform. So he's now readjusting to the life of being back home. All is good. They've celebrated. He's now clothed. He's washed. He's cleaned up. His dietary uh, requirements are, are beyond his wildest dreams. He's back. He's back where he started. But there is a residual effect of the far country. There is a residual effect to backsliding. There is a residual effect of coming back from maybe a season of insobriety, a, a season of giving yourself to, to the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eye and, and all these kinds of things. He now has to deal with the memories of a far country. I thank God that built into the gospel and built into the word of God that there is a, a way to deal with these memories, the haunting memories of a far country. Maybe seeing naked bodies, maybe maybe just uh, just feeling that momentary liberation of not having the rules of 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 having to live separated from from the world and and just being carefree and just letting it all go and and having to deal with the memories of all that. Make no mistake about it. The Holy Ghost and the blood of Jesus Christ and the Word of God is our weaponry. We still have the ways and means through the baptism of the Holy Ghost and the word of God of casting down, pulling down strongholds and casting down imaginations and putting those thoughts in their place and, and experiencing uh, 
the joy and, and the powerful principle of repentance. That when those thoughts come to us, to haunt us, and the devil is able to bring those thoughts and those memories before us, that we can overcome them by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony. But make no mistake about it. Those that have come back from a far country, maybe nobody even knows that you left, but you went to a far country secretly and you partook of the benefits and the lusts of a far country. You're still dealing with the memories, the haunting memories of a far country. But be of good cheer. Because the Holy Ghost, the Word of God, the blood of Jesus Christ, the strength of the body of Christ is here to help you keep those memories. Put them in a file and bury them under the blood and put them behind you and just keep trucking in Jesus' name. You know, there's a reason why the Apostle Peter said what he said about being sober and being vigilant because your adversary, the devil, the devil wants to be able to insert things into our lives through our lack of self-control, our intemperance, our lack of vigilance, those moments that, that we are tempted to, to become, to lack sobriety, to lack self-control. It produces thoughts. It produces memories. And they have to be dealt with. But God has given us He's given us the weaponry that we can deal with those memories. So don't let those memories haunt you. Stick them in a file, bury them under the blood. And when the devil seeks to bring up those particular thoughts, those memories, pull out your weapon and overcome them by the blood of the lamb and cast down those imaginations and keep on trucking because you are a child of God. Trust this has been a benefit and a blessing to you. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow morning.